It's been over a couple weeks since the release of AMD's high core count Ryzen 7000 X3D parts. We're still waiting for the 7800X3D to hit store shelves, but I wanted to follow up with you guys now that we have various reviews, benchmarks, and data to look at, which will tell us if these CPUs are worth buying. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. AMD's Ryzen 9 7950X 3D and 7900X 3D CPUs have been on the market for a couple weeks now and the overall reception these CPUs got was fairly positive. Though I think most reviewers said that you're better off just paying the extra $100 for the 7950X 3D over the 7900X 3D which was obviously what AMD wanted anyways. It was clearly an upsell tactic. Therefore, most of my discussion will be surrounding the 7950X 3D. I was actually someone who was quite skeptical about these CPUs when they were initially announced, but now that we've seen some benchmarks, I'm actually looking at them in a more positive light. Now, I wanted to begin by talking about power consumption. We'll talk about performance and pricing in just a moment, but wattage during gaming workloads is what I wanted to highlight first because it does tie into the other areas. Tech Power Up has a pretty good thorough review on their site. I'll link their review and any other review or site I talk about in the video description so you guys can check them out for yourselves. Tech Power Up has a section in their review where they show the average power consumption of the CPU in the games they tested and across the board we see great figures. Doesn't look like it exceeded 80 watts on average in any of the titles and if we look at the collective average they have it at just 56 watts which is astonishing. Compared to the 13900K it's not not even a competition and taking a look at the power consumption graph from tech power ups 13900k review it's an embarrassment intel i hope that whatever new series of desktop cpus you release next you have this power issue sorted out i know you can turn on eco modes undervolts and tune your system to lower power consumption out of the box and trust me as someone who advocates for people to play around with settings in their bios the reality is that most people don't want to do any of that and will run the component how it is configured out of the box. It's not the smartest thing to do, but this is just the way it is. Moving on to gaming, this is where things get quite interesting. The 7950X3D out of the box offers really good performance. In many titles, it offers performance that's just as good, if not better than the 13900K. Along with that, it seems like in those simulation type of games, like Microsoft Flight Sim, F1 2022, RTS games, MMOs, and those types of titles, the Vcash CPUs do really well and there are some significant leads the 7950X 3D has over the 13900K. And if you play those types of games primarily, then you'll be pleased. However, there are some important caveats with the 7950X 3D that you have to keep in mind. And hopefully as time goes along, AMD works with Microsoft on this issue. And the issue I'm talking about is the preferable scheduling. Tech Power Up showed multiple configurations where they had stock performance and then had the scheduler favoring the frequency die. So that's the CCD without Vcash. And they also had a configuration where they set it so it favored the CCD with Vcash. In games where Vcash is not utilized and single core performance is preferred, like CSGO for example, the 7950X3D does just as well as a 13900K, but you can see the stock numbers aren't as good, which means the scheduler wasn't targeting the right CCD. In Spider-Man Remastered, you can see it's a similar situation, but this time the scheduler didn't target the Vcash CCD. When they set the scheduler to prefer the cache die, now the 7950X3D sees a significant boost in performance, and it's on par with the 13900K. TechSpot in their review did the same thing. They actually went as far as disabling the other frequency CCD in the BIOS to simulate the upcoming 7800X 3D and the performance was considerably better. Just take a look at their factorial results. The 7950X 3D out of the box is basically tied with the vanilla 7950X. That's not a great result. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's good performance, but it's not in line with the performance advancement we'd expect from having Vcash, like it was with the 5800X 3D. But then when they disabled the other frequency die, so the game only works with the 3D cache die, we see a jump of almost 74%. Therefore, it should be obvious to you at this point that the scheduler clearly is not optimized 
to handle these situations on its own and user intervention is required. Whether it would be through disabling the other CCD altogether, or you use something like Process Lasso to make it so the scheduler only targets the desired CCD for that specific program or game. And this goes back to what I was talking about earlier. A lot of people just don't bother to tune or tweak their systems. Heck, a lot of people forget to turn on XMP or don't even realize you're supposed to go into your display settings and choose a higher refresh rate if, you're, if you have a gaming monitor. So all those people who say, this is no problem, just Project Lasso it, it's not a practical solution for the vast majority of users. Look, I'm no programmer and I couldn't explain to you the ins and outs of the way the scheduler is coded and how it detects certain programs. I did, however, test 40 games on my 13700K and found that Intel actually has done a great job optimizing the Windows scheduler to work in tangent with larger P cores and small E cores. Disabling E cores to make it so the games would have no choice but to target the large P cores didn't improve overall performance. It actually ended up hurting it, which shows the scheduler works correctly where it offloads background activity to the e-cores and the game is able to fully utilize the larger p-cores. It just works without any user intervention. Now AMD's situation is a bit more complex because we're not talking about different cores on the same die but it's the same cores on two separate dies but one just has a pool of SRAM stacked on top. I'm not even sure if the scheduler is even smart enough to figure that out and for the meantime AMD is probably going to have to release periodic chipset drivers or some kind of game profile maybe in Ryzen Master with manual profiling. This is probably why the upcoming 7800X3D had a separate release date from the higher end more expensive 7000X3D CPUs. AMD didn't want those parts being overshadowed by the cheaper option, it would kill the 7950X3D's sales. Given the result we saw from TechSpot's uh, review, the 7800X3D may end up faster on average when compared to the 7950X3D simply because it won't have the scheduler problem since there's only one CCD. That leads me into the portion of this discussion which is pricing and value. Let's forget about the 7800X3D for a moment. I look at the 7950X3D as the CPU which will give you the best of both worlds for those that want excellent gaming performance, albeit with a bit of tweaking, and also top tier productivity performance, then the 7950X3D will deliver. Now the reason why I talk about power consumption earlier is because since these 3D chips are so efficient and don't pull as much power as the vanilla 7000 CPUs, let alone Intel's, then you don't need a top tier cooler and don't need an expensive motherboard with a beefy VRM. Obviously for those workstation users who need the extra IO and PCIe lanes then you'll have no choice but to go with an expensive X670 board but you can buy a cheap B650 motherboard, grab one of those thermal right dual tower coolers, grab some DDR5 6000 memory and you're good to go. With the 13900K sure you do save like $120 but since it's so power hungry you need a good motherboard with a good VRM you need a 360mm AIO, and you'll also need good DDR5. We're talking about north of 7200 mega transfers to get the most out of it, and for it to be able to come close to the 7950X in those games which favor cash. I went on to PC Part Picker and configured two builds, or rather just the CPU, cooler, RAM, and motherboard portion, because everything else would be the same, and I found that you'd actually end up saving about $150 going with the AMD system, and I configured these in the way I would be purchasing them for my needs. As mentioned, if you need more I.O. or you want an A.I.O., that's your choice. You'd actually end up at around the same price, even if you added those to the AMD system. Looking on ahead, when the 7800X3D comes out, then AMD will be actually in a more favorable position because the 7800X3D will be about $70 cheaper than the 13900K. And again, you can probably save even more money on the cooler because it's just an 8-core. If you're someone who's after top tier gaming performance, then the 7800X3D will offer you a lot of value, especially if you play those simulation games. One thing you do have to keep in mind though is that when we talk about gaming performance when it comes to CPUs, a lot of the tests and results we discuss are with a top of the line GPU. So the RTX 4090 at 1080p. Now in reality, how many people do you think are actually buying a $500 CPU and then a $1000 plus GPU to only play at 1080p? Not a whole lot unless they're a competitive esports player using a 240Hz monitor. But most people buying this kind of hardware are gaming at 1440p and 4K. Most 1080p gamers are buying cheaper GPUs like the RTX 3060 or RX 6650 XT, and any modern CPU released in like the last 4 or 5 years is more than capable of handling those GPUs at 1080p. You do have to look at things on a game by game basis, as mentioned earlier if you play things like Simulator, RTS, then sure the X3D CPUs will offer you a lot of value. 
On the other hand, if you play a mix of titles you're ga- and you're gaming at 1440p or higher, maybe you play on ultra-wide, ultra then you don't necessarily need one of those CPUs. You can actually save some money going with a 13600K or 13700K. Right now on Amazon, you can find those CPUs for about $300 or $400 respectively, depending on if you go for the KF SKU. Looking at Tech Power Up's 1440p numbers, and the 13600K and 13700K are right there at the top alongside the 7950X3D and 13900K. Remember, this is with a 4090. Pair these CPUs with a 3080 or 4070, and the margins close up. And unlike the 13900K, these CPUs don't consume as much power, which means they don't get as hot, and you can get by with a lower end motherboard and air cooling. Plus, both the 13700K and 13600K also come with e cores, so they do still offer you excellent multi core performance. And it would definitely be better than the 7800X3D, that's for sure. So at the end of the day, it really just comes down to user preferences, cost, availability, and what you're doing with your system. I wish I had a clear answer for you, but I don't, and that's perfectly fine. I actually prefer the market to be like this because then it means we just have so many options in competition that it creates a favorable market for the consumer. It's good that we have lots of options to choose for. If you don't want to go with the 7950X3D, then that's fine. You can wait for the 7800X3D. However, if you still want top tier gaming performance, but also do workstation tasks, then the 13700K is actually a great all-rounder. If you want great gaming performance on a budget, then the 13600K is there for you as well. All I can do is lay out the strengths and weaknesses for them, and then it's up to you to decide what suits your needs the best. Let's just hope that this market competition can continue on because this will drive both companies to keep innovating and also result in great prices. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.